The final major piece of node configuration is the Hyper-V virtual switch. This is the component that allows your virtual machines to communicate with the network. We're going to discuss the operation of the switch, and then we're going to set it up on our nodes. Configuration is not difficult, but sometimes the concept is. When the switch is not set up correctly, virtual machines may not be able to communicate on the network, or they may not be able to move across Hyper-V cluster nodes. The most important thing to remember is that the Hyper-V virtual switch is, in fact, a switch. Your virtual machines plug in to it, and then it uplinks to the physical switch. Like a smart physical switch, it can use multiple physical ports for the uplink process. It is also aware of VLANs. There are three different types of virtual switches. The private type restricts communications to only virtual machines on the same host. Not even the host can participate. The internal type restricts communications to the virtual machines on a single host, but allows the host to participate. These types do not allow communication across cluster nodes and are therefore not very useful in a cluster environment. We are only going to deal with the third type, the external switch. When an external virtual switch is created, it is assigned to a physical adapter or a team of physical adapters. It completely takes them over and they can no longer be used for anything else. As we'll see in a bit, there are some options in the interfaces that say will allow the management operating system to share the adapter that is used for the switch. In reality, what's happening is that virtual adapters are created for the management operating system to use in exactly the same way that they are created for guests to use. The management operating system doesn't actually have access to the physical adapter. As we discussed in the last video, we will be using a converged fabric design for this cluster, which means that we'll have the management operating system use virtual adapters on our switch for the purpose of live migration and cluster communications. As you saw in the first video, you do have the ability to create a virtual switch if you enable Hyper-V through Server Manager. It wasn't recommended to do so because some features just can't be set there. You could also use Hyper-V Manager to create a virtual switch. That's also not recommended for the same reason. There are options you just can't set. Also, as you can see here, it's not easy to tell which adapter you'd be creating the switch on. What we're going to do instead is use PowerShell. The commandlet for switch creation is new VM switch. The first parameter it suggests is computer name. We're going to take advantage of this to set up the switches on both nodes at the same time. The benefit is that it guarantees that the switch has the same name and settings on all nodes. If the nodes use switches with different names, then you can't migrate guests between them. The next parameter is name. The name usually isn't important and can be changed later. If you think you'll be using multiple virtual switches on the same host, the naming becomes more important. We're only going to use one, as there aren't many valid use cases for multiple. So, we're just going to use the simple name vSwitch. PowerShell will suggest switch type next. Don't use this parameter, or it uses a different parameter set, and we won't get the options we want. This is the allow parameter that we talked about. If we set it to true, it will create a virtual adapter just for the management operating system that we'll then have to go back and edit later. We're going to set it to false instead. Despite the allow wording, setting this to false won't prevent us creating from our own adapters. Remember the dollar sign on false. Here is where you specify which adapter to create the switch on. We're going to use the teamed adapter that we created in the previous video. As you recall, it was named Converged Team. If you forgot, you can open another PowerShell prompt and run Get Net Adapter to see your adapters. Next, set the quality of service mode. The documentation indicates that the default mode is weight, which is not true. The actual default is absolute. In the weight mode, adapters are all given numbers. Those with higher numbers have higher priority. In absolute mode, you specify exactly how much bandwidth is to be reserved for an adapter. The weight mode is recommended any time you are using a team, as the loss of a physical adapter could mean that more bandwidth is assigned than is available. We'll talk more about quality of service in a later video. But for now, remember that what you set here is permanent. The only way to change it is to delete the virtual switch. Also, adapters won't move to a switch that have a different QoS type. The last option to set is Enable IOV. This is a hardware function on high-end network adapters that allows a virtual adapter to directly use the hardware without going to the Hyper-V switch at all. Unfortunately, it can't be used in conjunction with adapter teaming, and most network adapters that support IOV only have a handful of IOV functions available. 
Now, our switch is created on both nodes. We still need those virtual adapters, though. This is very easy to do with the add VM network adapter commandlet. We also assign them into VLANs according to our network design. Next, we assign them IP addresses. This commandlet doesn't have a computer name parameter, so we have to connect to the other node. Notice the names that the management operating system uses for the adapters. So that's everything. Our nodes are now prepared. This concludes the first section of our video series. In the next section, we're going to assemble our newly configured nodes into a cluster.